The Boston Celtics are certainly making big waves this season. They currently have the best record in the NBA and the largest active winning streak. They have the league's best home record and have already recorded two 50-point wins this season with a massive win over the Nets right before the All-Star break. They are one of two teams to currently rank top five in both offensive and defensive rating. They are nearly averaging 17 three-point makes per game and a 50% team field goal percentage. I'd say they are looking unstoppable right now, but we have seen this many times before. The Celtics look great during the regular season and come up short in the playoffs. So is this the year the Celtics finally win that elusive 18th championship and break the tie with the Lakers? Or will this be another disappointing end to a great season? How have they improved since last year? Stick around to find out. It's very clear that the Celtics have been dominant this season, especially looking at the standings. As of the end of February, they're sitting comfortably with a seven-game lead over the Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference, and they even have the tiebreaker against Cleveland. The Timberwolves in the Western Conference are trailing closest, sitting four games behind the Celtics for the best record in the league. Checking out what's coming up on the schedule, it seems like the Celtics might just keep widening their league best record by the end of the season. Their schedule isn't too tough, as it is ranked third easiest with an average winning percentage of 463 for their remaining opponents. Meanwhile, the Cavaliers have a bit more of a challenge ahead, ranked right in the middle at 15th with a 503 average winning percentage of their remaining opponents. As for the Bucks and the Knicks, who are trailing even further behind the Celtics, their schedules look much rougher, with the Bucks schedule third toughest at 534 and the Knicks schedule 14th at 504. So it looks like Boston has a clear runway to having home court advantage throughout the playoffs. Now although the Celtics have an overall easy schedule, they do have a challenging first three weeks of their second half of the season. Six out of their first 11 games are against top teams from both conferences. And that's not even counting the Warriors. The Warriors showdown comes after facing off against the 76ers and Mavericks in a three-game home stretch, followed by a tough four-game road trip against the Cavaliers, Nuggets, and Suns. But once they wrap up against the Suns at home, the Celtics catch a break. They don't play their next back-to-back -back until March 11th and 12th, and their schedule lightens up considerably with only six games against top seven teams in their conference standings for the final 16 games of the season. And two of their last four games of the season are against Milwaukee and New York. By that time, Boston might already have the top seed locked up, one of the major reasons why the Celtics have been so great and might even snag the trophy this season is because of a smart trade move they made at the 2022 trade deadline. Leading up to it, they were just an average team, hovering around 500 halfway through the season. Then they brought in Derek White and, to be honest, many people didn't think much about it at the time. Many didn't even have Boston down as a legit contender, but the move ultimately did pay off. Suddenly, they turned into the team to beat, cruising through the second half of the season and making it all the way to the finals before falling to the Warriors. Think about it, if they hadn't pulled off that move, there may not even be the dynamic duo of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum tearing up the court together anymore. There were plenty of talks about splitting up Brown and Tatum before White came on board, but thankfully, that didn't happen. That trade set the stage for everything else that followed. And then there was a big off-season shakeup. After a bit of a rocky playoff run last year, they decided to make some changes. Out went Marcus Smart, a real cornerstone of the Celtics game, and in came Chris Stapp's Porzingis. And just when you thought that was it, they had the chance to bring in Drew Holiday. Now picture this, if everyone stays healthy, and yeah, that's a big if considering the injury history of guys like Holiday, Porzingis, and Al Horford. But if they do, watch out. It seems that there's no team that can really compete with them at full strength. And sure, the Nuggets are the reigning champs and have been good, and a few others are close, but when Boston's firing on all cylinders, they look unbeatable. Because of this, it's not wild to claim that the Celtics are in a league of their own when they're on their A game. They've got the talent, the chemistry, and now the depth thanks to those smart moves. If they can stay healthy and keep playing like they have been, it might just be a year to remember for Celtics fans. In all honesty, a big part of Celtics success can be credited to their new coach. When he took over from their old coach, Ime Udoka, Joe Mazzula had a rough start. He was thrown into a mess and scrambling to figure out things on the spot. But this season, with a year under his belt and some solid work in the offseason, Mazzula certainly has ingrained his coaching style into the minds of the players. 
He seems to be all about mentality over results. Whether they win or lose, the Celtics keep their cool. Missoula has even said they should never get too gritty after a win or too down after a loss. It's all about staying level-headed and consistent. Through all the highs and lows of the season, Missoula has kept his cool. He cracks jokes with the reporters and teases them about stuff, but when it comes to the team, he's all business. He sticks to the same principles he preached from day one. He's all about living in the moment, not getting caught up in the distractions or the big picture. Porzingis summed it up pretty well, saying they've got a goal, but they've got to live that goal every single day. It's about putting in the work day in and day out, focusing on the process rather than just the end result. For Missoula, it's all about growth. He believes in learning from every experience, whether it's a win or a loss. He doesn't dwell on slumps or mistakes. Instead, he sees them as a chance to learn and improve. Results are important, sure, but they're not everything. It's the journey that counts, and that's why he's the perfect fit for this Celtics team right now. Another factor that may contribute to the Celtics winning a trophy this season is how they stack up against other top teams in the league. Looking at some of the other contenders, there aren't any matchups that seem to give them trouble. Take Denver, for example. Of course, they won the title last year, but they tend to struggle against speedy guards in the backcourt. And their defense at the 5 spot isn't always top notch, especially against certain ball screen combinations. So, if a team catches fire shooting wise, it could spell trouble for them. Then there's Philadelphia. Sure, they're really good, but they heavily rely on Joel Embiid offensively. When he's not on the court, their offense can hit a rough patch real quick. And Milwaukee, well their perimeter defense is kinda shaky right now. In all honesty, they don't have many lockdown defenders on their roster. If they were up against Boston in the playoffs tomorrow, they likely won't be up to the task. They're hoping for some guys to come back from injury, but even if they return, their perimeter defense might not be up to par. Besides Philadelphia, other teams that could potentially win trophies this season also have their own issues. Take Minnesota for example. They're a solid team, but like many others, they struggle against certain matchups because of how their roster is set up. When it comes to versatility, Boston seems to be the most versatile team out there. They can switch things up, play big or small while focusing on three-point shooting, or dominating in the post. The thing is, while they've been impressive in the postseason over the years, there's still a lingering question. Can their star players like Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown step up and lead the team to victory when it matters most? Sure, they've had their moments, but to win it all, they need to deliver in clutch moments consistently. Now, let's say it's Game 6 of the Finals, and Boston's up 3-2 with a 3-point lead and 2 minutes left on the clock. Will Tatum or Brown deliver with the right play in that clutch moment? That's the big question mark hanging over them, but despite these uncertainties, Boston seems destined to be the Eastern Conference representative in the NBA Finals. It seems bold to predict the outcome of a team, especially around the halfway point of the season. And of course, things could change and Boston could face its own challenges along the way. But based on the moves they've made, like acquiring Derek White, Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis, and reshaping their roster around Tatum and Brown, they look well built to win it all. So what do you think? Will the Boston Celtics win their first championship since 2008, or will this be another disappointing end to a great season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel so you know about our upcoming content, and check out our recent video about what the Dallas Mavericks have done to turn into a legit title contender this season. See you next week in our next video.